This is the Nightwolf howling at you, and today we're going to be taking a look at another one of the Skeletron figures. This one is part of the Skeletron Faction 4 series, which I think is them leaning into the whole uh, G.I. Joe uh, setting. Just because, if I remember correctly, we got the original O-Ring figures. Uh, we then got a couple reissues later on as anniversary ones, and then they started going into the four inch more, uh, I'm going to say realistic looking figure line. And when you look at the box from the previous uh, Go Ring figure, it doesn't have the faction information underneath there. So I think that might be a play on that. But this is our Wolf Trooper. On the back, we see a lot of the other uh, items available for purchase in this line. Uh, Blood Wolf, uh, the Roboskull Mark II, and the Roboskull Mark II SE. I will be getting both of those with what I purchased, or should be. Uh, Red Weasel, who would be the pilot. Uh, obviously the Wolf Trooper, the Assassin Skeledrones, which I have and have not opened. They have their own version of Skeletron in this one that's a full figure and not just a replacement head. A Jungle Wolf Trooper and the Gar Wolf or Grey Wolf or however you're supposed to pronounce that. I'm not sure. The information on the data file is actually just a little bit different than the one that came with the Go Ring figure. So we're back to Codename Wolf Trooper, Primary Specialty, Airborne Infantry, Secondary Military Specialty, Aerospace Pilot. Recruited from the ranks of hardened soldiers with suitable psychological profiles, Wolf Troopers are elite hunters who relentlessly pursue their prey across land, sky, and space. Trained and equipped with advanced experimental technology, a Wolf Trooper's formable arsenal includes a radiation-shielded armored suit with HUD display. Personal jetpack, zero gravity firearms, and titanium composite combat claws. Exceptional wolf troopers are tested for their resistance to the most punishing G force, and if they survive, pilot the Red Skull, Red Shadow's most fearsome weapon, the Robo Skull Mark II. Howl at the moon, these guys howl on the moon. And this time, Going along with more modern things, they actually do have Skeletron.com there, so if you are interested, you may be able to buy your own. So let's open them up, and once again, we will knife ourselves. That came off beautifully. And like modern figures, uh, they do have They do have plastic trays for everything. So let's take a good look at the figure himself. Uh, the equipment is a separate piece here for the shoulder part this time, which does look like we can take it off and hopefully not break it. Oh my God. Mm. Wonder, well, the head is really tight. So, ah, there we go. So yeah, there we got the suit on its own without the figure. Uh, I'll be interested. I think this is probably meant to hold one of his weapons. And we'll find out in a little bit. Not too bad. Trying to get that harness back on is kind of a pain in the butt. Just to do a brief comparison real quick. You can see where they are based more on the 4-inch G.I. Joe figures now compared when you compare them to the His Tank Driver. Rip it. Although they did still stick kind of more with like the design with the O-ring 
it, even if it's not an o-ring it still has the hip movement at the o-ring where like the most recent gi joe four inch collection actually has the waist swivel area up at the top instead of the hip um at the hips face sculpt he's basically got the same face as the other one just more detail to the helmet or the I don't know. Is that a helmet? I guess that is. It's weird. It, it definitely feels like a helmet, but that should be more of one of those, um, more of a fabric, I would think. Articulation-wise, we've got the ball joint in the head that allows for looking up and down. I don't seem to be getting any kind of movement in the neck, which I didn't really look at when we took it off, so that was kind of stupid of me, but, you know, whatever. Uh, arm goes up the AFAR. Uh, it does feel like it might be hindered by the armor. You can go forward. You can go back. You can kind of go out like that if you want. But yeah, the, uh, the armor itself does kind of hinder. He's got a single joint in the elbow. And there is a pin in there so you can turn it. No separate bi bicep cup, however. And the fist does have a peg. Uh, but no hinge, it looks like. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I, I do not see a hinge in the hand. As mentioned before, there is a ball joint at the waist, so you can get lots of movements and spin them all the way around if you want. And no rubber band to pull out. They can kick over this way, yay far. Kick forward, yay far and kick back yay far he does in fact have a double jointed knee so that's a bonus which our previous gi joe figure also had looks like all the pins are plastic in this case uh, we do have a boot cut and we have the hinge up and down on the foot and the spin Comparison wise, you can definitely see the whole um, more advanced figuring. You know, they did do the good, you know, classic 80s style of these toys and then the update. And you can definitely see the difference and how it kind of works out. Uh, I think it worked out pretty good in this case. He also comes with a new design for a figure stand. Not sure how well this is going to pick up on camera, being that it's as clear as it is, but it does have the skull design on it, or the faction logo. And it's got three pegs. You know, I've complained about single peg stands. This would give you more um, posing options, really. Because you can go ahead and stick them on the different pegs if you want. It also looks like the peg holes are are smaller on the new stand as well. So they did good on the stand, I think. We have his equipment to take a quick look at as well. This version of the Wolf Trooper does not come with a Skulltron head because he will have his own separate figure with an entire body made specifically for it. His jetpack this time still holds the claws and looks a lot different and more futuristic looking. You know, based on something you would see in sci-fi where this was kind of based more on what we would see, you know, modern era. And he's got the double pinhole in the back and in his armor so that you can fit that in there. We've got the helmet, which is of course designed differently than the previous version for the O-ring. Though you can definitely see that it is just an updated version and it's got, doesn't have this little lippy part 
that helps to seal it to the figure itself. Instead, it just fits over the head like so. And it seems more like a sealed environment instead of, or seals that way instead of being like a full um, neck thing. So you can actually turn your head more. We have his pistol here, which is looks like something more out of a uh, halo to me. And it looks like it is designed to actually fit onto If you can figure it out, it looks like it's designed to attach to his thing on the hip here. There we go. It's a tight fit, which I guess you want, but also at the same time, it would worry me that it might damage either the gun or the or the holder. He comes with a more space futuristic rifle design than the previous version was. And of course, painted, again, going with the whole modern aesthetics. Or would this be the 2010 aesthetics? which will fit in his hand like so. The claws are of course attachable to the backpack again like the previous version. Only in this case, they definitely make it look far more wicked like a weapon. Like if you wanted to, you could launch this actually at your enemies. And those will attach to his wrist gauntlets. And let's see if we can actually have it attach. Ah! Well, you can't attach him while he's holding the gun, but we'll find out if we can uh, attach the gun after they're attached. Hold the gun after they're attached. These claws are definitely a lot more wicked looking than than this one with the previous trooper. Ooh. So I, I think uh, I think I know who I want in the fight with claws if I'm going to be doing that. Although you could short them down like this too if you wanted. Not sure why you would, but you know, anyway. And let's see if we can put his gun back into position while he's got the claw on now that. Uh... Yeah, there you go. So you can have the claws and the gun in position if you want. I think these figures are a great addition to your your four inch figure collection, AKA your uh, late stage GI Joe ones. And uh, I kind of wish I had had the money at the time to order extras of these ones and actually do troop building, but unfortunately I did not at the time. When the Skeletrons came out, they did offer people a chance to get a discounted price on them if you'd already ordered. Uh, I did not get an email about that for this series, otherwise I may have jumped on it. I still might order some more to be honest, but anyway. I would definitely say if you like these style figures, go for it. Uh, when the Robo Skull itself comes out, it's been designed according to them to hold either two of these three and three quarters to four inch figures or one six inch figure. So it can be used with either your classified or your retro scale lines. And that's going to be freaking awesome. And it also makes me kind of wish I'd gotten more than just the Mark II and the Mark II SE. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And actually, let me know if you're actually interested in getting these or maybe if you've already gone ahead and supported the Kickstarter and are getting these in now. Peace and love.